How's it going, guys? Difficult question for pathology. If you're a 40 year old dude, five month history, dry cough, redness of both shins, we have this biopsy here. What's most likely to be seen? Should I say decreased glutathione? It's fucking wrong, it makes no sense. Glutathione is a molecule in the liver, it's a reducing agent, and it mops up oxidizing agents, neutralizes them. Okay, so when you have acetaminophen toxicity and you get a toxic metabolite, NAPQI, strong oxidizing agent. You have reduced glutathione, which has a thiol group, SH group, and it's going to be oxidized into a disulfide bond form. NBME asked this. Okay, they want you to know SH thiol is reduced glutathione. That's a good thing. When it interacts with an oxidizing agent, such as NAPQI, it becomes oxidized, which is disulfide bond, double S. Okay, so wrong fucking answer. Choice B, and of course, n cysteine has a thiol group that's going to regenerate your reduced glutathione uh, treatment for acetaminophen toxicity. Choice B, Kaleuris is fucking wrong, so it's a fancy word that means micturation, urination of potassium. You could see that, let's say, with increased RAS, anything that's going to do that, whether it's primary adrenal, where you have, let's say, a Kahn syndrome, aldosterone screening tumor, hyperplasia of the zona glomerulosa, whether you have renovascular hypertension, fiber muscular dysplasia, renal artery stenosis, where you get increased renin causing your increased aldosterone. Those are examples of how you could have increased activity of that basolateral sodium potassium ATPase bump in the cortical collecting duct, ultimately resulting in kaleuresis. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, granulation tissue is fucking wrong, me being an asshole, because this is not the same as granny, granuloma, which is what we have in this image here. Okay, so granulation tissue. This is new tissue, highly vascular, rich in type 3 collagen when you have wound healing. So an early wound healing where type 3, which is fibrillar collagen, and it's pink in color. You have somebody wants you to know the histology for that tangentially where you'll just see lots of blood, mini blood vessels being formed. So that's why scar tissue is initially pink for the first few months, and then it's going to be replaced with type 1 collagen, which is more white in color and has more tensile strength than type 3, and wounds can achieve 80% of their original tensile strength, which is your number that's classically given in the literature. But you know, similarly will do this. This is not granulation tissue, this image. Don't confuse that with granuloma. Granulomas are collections of multinucleated coalesced macrophages. So they can be because they're trying to, let's say, phagocytose a foreign body, or they can just be idiopathic autoimmune, which is sarcoidosis in this case. That's what this dude has. He has erythema nodosum, redness of the shins. You get dry cough. You get liver involvement sometimes, where you get bile ductual occlusions with high ALP. But you've got granulomas, so these epithelioid activated macrophages, aka histiocytes, they're going to interact with CD4 plus T cells. That's what we're looking at here. All the basophilic, the purple appearing cells, those are your T cells. And then the more eosinophilic, pink, more amorphous collections, these are your macrophages for the granuloma. And they, of course, secrete your 1 alpha hydroxylase that converts inactive D3, 25D3, into active 125D3. Ladder goes to the small bowel, increases calcium and phosphate absorption. So that's why choice D is the correct answer, because if you're pulling calcium out of the small bowel lumen, then you're going to have less calcium in the feces. If you've been following my content, you've gone through my clips, you know I've talked about this. I've talked about an high-yield arrows PDF as well, where they like decreased fecal calcium on USMLA. It sounds really weird, but they like that when you've got... Uh, calcium being pulled, whether it's hyperparathyroidism, not the case here, or whether you have something like sarcoidosis, you're going to have uh, calcium pulled out of the feces ultimately. Okay. PTH is actually suppressed in sarcoidosis because of the hypercalcemia. Uh, you're going to increase negative feedback to the calcium sensing receptors, the parathyroid glands. PTH goes down. So they'll give you the same question here and they'll, they'll make an arrow question. It'll be up arrow. 125D3, down arrow, holy shit, for PTH. So let's just 
with the final one, Thyroid Proxies, Disruption's fucking wrong, Nebulous sounding answer choice, of course, with Hashimoto, Thyroiditis, um, your high, primary hypothyroidism, classic autoimmune condition, you get antibodies against thyroperoxidase, aka antimicrosomal antibodies against thyroglobulin. Okay, so low T3, T4, high TSH, Hashimoto, aka chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. So you're going to have a lymphocytic infiltrate on biopsy. They want you to know that. Don't confuse the mechanism with Graves disease, which is going to be antibodies against TSH receptor that activate the receptor. Those antibodies are called. TSI, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, but of course that's hyperthyroidism. We have increased T3, T4, decreased TSH. Wrong fucking answer. 